It's time now for Ask the Surgeon, brought to you by Everett Bone and Joint. Everett Bone and Joint, the best choice to get you back in the game. Learn more at everettboneandjoint.com. Our surgeon with us today, Dr. Peter Kinahan from Everett Bone and Joint. Thank you. Welcome. Maury, thanks so much for having me. Before we uh, get into... Uh, Shoulder dislocation, our topic of acid surgeons this week. Let's, uh, let's review one of the uh, Super Bowl injuries. Charles Woodson, uh, broke his collarbone, uh, the first half and they showed him on the sidelines. I don't know, did you notice on the sidelines when they showed him he kind of was wincing? Yeah, and he was trying to celebrate, but yeah. he couldn't really get into it because yeah. as soon as he started to move, he, you know, kind of grimaced a little bit. So. so, uh, what's done for broken collarbones? Well, when I was, just a young lad. Yes. We always would just put people in the sling and tell them, they're there, you'll get better. Mm -hmm. You don't actually need to do anything for it. As a matter of fact, we told people, you should not ever operate on a clavicle because if you do, that would be higher risk of it going on to not healing. But nowadays, um, what we found over time with the rehab studies is that if the fracture is more than a centimeter shortened or more than 100% displaced, that people tend to get... Um, dysfunction of the shoulder because the collarbone shortening up gives the muscles sort of the wrong length to mm -hmm. move the shoulder. And so if people have, especially younger patients, athletes, um, if they have that situation where the bone is shortened or overriding, um, then we'll tend to fix it. And there are different ways to fix it. You can put a plate and screws on. We have special sort of S-shaped plates because the collarbone's not a straight bone. And then there are different little intermediary devices, screws and things like that, that we can also use to fix it. So how long is he out for then? Will he be back next next football season? Like? Oh, yeah, he'll be back for okay. sure. Yeah. Stronger than ever. Yeah, and I don't, again, I don't know how displaced right. it is. That's a lot of force going. I mean, you land, land with a couple of guys on top yeah, of you. Yeah, I think it was mm. landed. Yeah, that's how I did it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, shoulder separations. Shoulder dislocations. I've dislocated my shoulder. I know. I know it's a, it's a lot of fun. I'm I'm not going to talk about how it happened. <laughs> um, but so so there's a difference between shoulder subluxation versus dislocation, which means well the diff So you mentioned shoulder separation, yeah, and then subluxation, and then dislocation. Oh, that's so that, that's and another thing right three there. Three different things. <laughs> Who yeah. knew? Yeah. I'm this close from a medical degree, Tom. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> You've learned yeah. all these things I over know. these years. You're no amazing. Yeah. Um, so a shoulder separation is when you separate the end of your collarbone mm -hmm. from your scapula. Okay. A shoulder subluxation is when you partially force the ball out of the socket. And then a dislocation is just simply force the ball all the way out of the socket. And that usually happens... That's really a very common sports injury. It happens about 95% of the time it happens where the ball pops out the front. And it usually gets leveraged out, and it's frequently in soccer players, baseball players, football players, where their arm gets sort of forced up and out, and especially if there's a collision. Wouldn't you say, Jordan, yeah. most of your guys you're looking after? Yeah, you know, the, the people that come in and, and have graduated from physical therapy or are recovering, you know, obviously from their, their dislocation or subluxation, they are tend to be contact sports. You know, I've, I've had a handful of baseball players just because they haven't had a really good throwing program. Um, I had a couple kids in the past. One of them dislocated their shoulder as they were throwing. It was a pitcher, bad over-pitching, but, you know, it's a whole other story in um, – yeah, pretty, is that pretty contact. rare, though? Uh, for a, to throw uh, when you're throwing as a yeah. pitcher, it, I, like I said, it ha I've had two kids that that's happened over my hmm. eight year, uh, six year career in uh, sports performance. So, um, you know, it, me personally haven't had any uh, injuries hitting the ground, uh, you know, but I'm taught how to land properly. And, right. You know, as far as football, that's a you know a little bit more chaotic uh, contact sport than anything. So. Okay, different symptoms from the uh, the dislocation and the separation and the subluxation. Absolutely. Okay. The, the separation, usually you end up with a bump, pain, and difficulty moving your shoulder. It's usually um, treated, now. nowadays it's almost always treated with physical therapy. Mm -hmm. you, again, back 20 years ago, we used to put screws in and right. slings and fix them up. But most of the time now, on an acute basis, we don't fix those. And the reason is that the studies have shown people get back to their sports, back to their activities faster, rehab's better, and they... They just do better without surgery for a separation. Now, subluxation or dislocation, again, initially, you know, five to seven days of mobilization, and then usually get them into therapy, get them exercising, rehabilitation, strengthening their muscles, 
and then they're much less likely to have a recurrent dislocation. Yeah, we want to strengthen that musculature all around, you know, that, that air whole area that if they've had any trauma there, we'll make sure that's nice and strong so it can support it again. So so uh when when this happens, what do, what can you expect at the doctor's office? What do you what do you have them do? The range of motion type thing, is that the deal and, and uh well, actually, Maury, I think you should step back and go, when it happens, it's usually on the field. Right. And so what do people really do and and what's the reality? Right? Yell, scream in pain. Yeah, um, it really hurts. Yeah, I know. I mean, it really hurts. Um, and there's probably not very many things in orthopedics that hurt as much as a dislocation. Mm-hmm. And if you break a bone, that, that hurts a lot. But when you dislocate a joint, it's horrible. And so... Sometimes, depending if the person's ever dislocated it before, sometimes they'll have a friend help them or like in that lethal weapon movie where the guy <laughs> yeah. whacks his shoulder against a tree and knocks it back in. I always like the ones where they're like in handcuffs and they dislocate their Just own to arms that, to get yeah. out of it. I like that one the best. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that actually brings up, because there are different types of dislocations. Some mm. people have really loose ligaments. And so some people can have what you call multi-directional instability where their shoulder can pop forward, back, sideways, up and down, and go out all over the place. And other people have a traumatic type of a dislocation, which is usually just primarily in one direction, usually anterior. So, Are those the ones that it takes, like, you know, you watch, like, a, a show on TV where it takes, like, four people to put the guy's arm back in and Yeah, you know, so part of it depends on what the actual injury is, how young the guy is, how strong he is, his muscles. If you if you get at it really quickly, then sometimes it'll just pop back in very quickly. But usually what we have to do for an acute situation, you have to have an intravenous, get x-rays, confirm the diagnosis, because there could be a fracture there as well. Mm-hmm. And then if you try and lever on the arm and put the ball back in the socket, the person might end up with a much bigger problem. So... Um, in the ideal situation, the person gets an x-ray, has intravenous medication, which makes them sleepy, relaxes their muscles, and then you can usually pop it back in pretty easy. And then um, the further treatment beyond that would be, again, early immobilization, and then get them going, get them exercising. And, re- and again, a couple of maybe 15 years ago, we would keep them in a sling for three or four weeks and immobilize them. Now it's much more aggressive early get them going and get them strengthening as fast as possible. Hmm. So if you have this happen to you early in life, in your teens, is there a higher chance that it's going to dislocate as you uh, as you go on? In, yeah, I really own? think that there is. And and there are, there are other... Nothing to stop it? Well, there are other types yeah. of things. There are other... So when you dislocate your shoulder, sometimes you tear your labrum, mm-hmm. which is the cartilage inside your shoulder. Sometimes you bang in and it can punch a part of the the ball in so almost like a ping pong ball if you imagine you take it and you squish it and it pops in same sort of thing can happen with the uh with the head of the humerus and so if you have an injury like that then sometimes we there are things that we have to do to go in and fix things to try and prevent it from popping back out again we're talking to dr peter kinahan orthopedic surgeon from everbona joint this is the ask the surgeon segment so uh, will you always have instability in your shoulder if you've had one of these always? No. Okay. No. Frequently, um, it'll heal up. You can, I mean, sometimes you'll tear the cart. You have to injure something to dislocate your shoulder. Right. You have to tear something. Yeah. Um, but frequently, the body can heal itself. So with appropriate um, exercise, physical therapy, rehabilitation, getting your muscles strong, frequently people will get back to their sport and not really have any permanent problem from it. Okay. And surgery? When do you consider surgery? That's that's kind of controversial. In a younger patient, if they have a large cartilage tear and they have a lot of instability of their shoulder, some people um, recommend going in early and repairing that labrum. Um, certainly if, if someone has recurrent dislocation or if they have other injuries associated. So sometimes we see a dislocated shoulder in the context of a car accident um, with a vascular injury or a nerve injury. In those situations, it's maybe more you're maybe more aggressive to go in and repair things. But generally, the context of repairing the tissues for a, a recurrent dislocation is a fairly good indication. Mm. Uh, first time, most people would be conservative and, and do the rehabilitation. And of course, obviously, even if you go in and repair it, after that, you need to do, you need to rehab it. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Shoulder's one of those joints where, you know, it, it's one of the most important joints for an athlete, period. So, you know, as far as when it gets to a performance level, we want to make sure we take a gradual, you know, progression to get that athlete back to where he can uh, be active and, and effective again. Tom, question. How about prevention? Is there a way to prevent it? If I don't ever want it to happen, how do I prevent that? <laughs> you turn the other way. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I think in, in a contact sport, I think, you know, it, 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 sometimes that's a little difficult, but, you know, as far as just making sure that, that the surrounding, you I, know. I dislocated my shoulder my sophomore year in high school playing football, and they gave me this little thing that I couldn't lift my arm up high enough, and I dislocated it like every single year after that. That stopped nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, the only way, I mean, if it's an anterior dislocation, so the, typically the ball coming out the front, if you prevent your arm coming up and out to the side, so if you had a, sort of a rope from your wrist to your waist that prevented your arm from coming up, but then, I mean, there's, there's not really any functional sling or anything like that that would... That wouldn't limit that would, range of motion. It would, it would limit you yeah. so much. There's, there's, so there isn't... An, other than, I mean, really, truly strengthening your and keeping your muscles strong is pro- probably your best way of preventing yeah. it in the first place. Yep, absolutely. The pitchers that you said that you saw, the couple pitchers, did they ever pitch again? Uh, yeah, they did. You know, and again, they were on a pretty aggressive rehabilitation program through physical therapy, and then you know, just gradually going through a um, you know a, a consistent uh, program that, that followed you know certain regimens, a proper warm up, uh, proper pacing of their throws, distance of their throws, and mm-hmm. just gradually building them up, and they recovered fine. So it huh. was it was kind of one of those you know freak things that you. See see um you know i didn't see it i heard about it secondhand but i got the athlete after he graduated um, from physical therapy and, and came and saw us and said hey this was my deal and you know we want to help you get back to 100 percent so wow good stuff dr kinahan great great information